Hello and welcome everybody to the week two of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. I am your host Sam Peterson and we're going to be doing another week of fun Photoshop challenges. Uh, good to see everybody in chat. Good to see a hype chat on Monday morning. I hope you guys are excited for today's challenge because I am. So just a quick heads up. Um, these are two weeks of challenges, 30 minutes each day, Monday through Friday. And if you're watching over on YouTube, come on over to Behance. That's where I'm going to be able to see your comments, questions, anything like that. That's where I'm going to be able to respond to the chat. And um, we can talk about our first challenge today. So if you guys want to know how to join these challenges first off, um, you go to the landing page here on Behance.net. Let me show there. There we go. Behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. If you see here at the top, there's a big blue button. You can click that to register for the challenges. And if you scroll down here, you'll see all the challenges that have been revealed so far. So like I said, this is two weeks of challenges. But if you're, um, if you're watching these live, you'll see one get revealed each day. If you're watching this as a replay, we have two weeks of replays. It'll say Creative Encore down at the bottom. And um, that's just to give you some extra time to work on these. So the one that was just revealed today is Color a Painting. Bring a grayscale painting to life by adding color using blending modes, color theory, and adjustment layers. So I think a lot of you have maybe seen how to colorize photos before. I always like to bring in a little bit of like an illustration challenge into these DCCs when I host them. And um, today I'm going to kind of show you something that you may or may not be familiar with. It's more of an illustrated technique, but it's going to be how to color a grayscale painting. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do digital art. A popular method is starting from grayscale and then adding color layer later and that's what we're going to be going over. Uh, I just want to say hi to everyone in the chat first off. Gideon, Nick, I saw Ted in there. Ted, appreciate that. Uh, Wade, Frank, good to see you. Anki, Christelle, Laura, what's up everybody? I think I said Annika. Hello Annika. Uh, General Kenobi, good to see you. Uh, Bliss, what's up everybody? Welcome on in. Robert, I see Robert in there as well. So uh, before we move into it, I also want to talk about the Discord. So if you go over to the Discord, this is where you can post all your challenges. This is where you can share with the community. You can see what other people are doing. You can get feedback. You can give feedback to other people. Um, that is in the let's see challenge section here on the left-hand side. Um, you'll see it says feedback. This is where all our channels are. The challenge is the one where you're going to post the current challenges. Uh, design feedback is if you're doing challenges that are unrelated. There's the ask a question section. All that stuff. Um, in case you have any like technical issues or something you're trying to figure out that you don't quite understand. Sean and Matt, what's up? Thought I saw Sean in there. Andreas, good to see you. Norish, what's up? Arashful, good to see you. Welcome on in, everybody. So there's been a lot of awesome challenges here. I've been like, uh, Norali, I just saw this before the stream. I'm digging those textures. Really cool background. Nailing this with the coloration. Um, I like the the color shifting within the face. These are great. We got some blur challenges going with the super speed blur from uh, Giddy. I think that's how you say it. Hopefully I'm not going to butcher anyone's name. And then we got Frank coming in. I love it. A little glowing aura. I'm taking this to the next level. This looks great. Awesome work on the textures. They blend in with the skin flawlessly. Frank's always coming in with the pro designs. We got more from Frank here. Smoking text effect. Nailed it. The arrival. I love it. I love the hue shifting here. We got RAR with sultry smoking text. So there's some really great challenges. Uh, keep it up. I'll be doing feedback in here later today. But before we get too deep into that, let's uh, let's jump into Photoshop. What do you say, everybody? So today's challenge. This is the starter file if you want to use it. Um, you do not have to use this. I just thought it would be fun to paint up a, a monster because I love monsters, as you guys may know. And um, you guys can use my painting if you want. If you have some other digital painting that you'd like to color that's grayscale, go for it. You could even use these techniques on a photo. It's totally welcome to. But I kind of wanted to show the context of an illustration today. So speaking of photos, I would be remiss if I did not at least touch upon the neural filter colorize. Many of you may be familiar with this, um, but I thought it's, it's an important thing to at least mention. We're not going to be doing this today but I just want you to know about it if you do not already. So if you go up to filter and then you go to neural filters, you get this cool little box and you'll see colorize. We can check that on and it's going to be doing some AI calculations here. I actually have to move this. See if you can kind of still see that. 
I'll move myself over to the right hand side so you can see these bars and it, that's a pretty cool job right there like it's got this like kind of orangey skin tone it's got a little bit of red in the lips and ears it's pretty neat um, you can crank up the saturation you can put it down desaturate it and play kind of play around with these you can even try different profiles um, retro purple yellow always a fun contrast and um, you can play with the profile strength by adjusting these here but I thought the uh, the default was kind of neat. You know, we can click OK, and you'll see that it created an additional layer. So that is one way to kind of get a base coloration, whether you're doing a photo or a painting. You could even try it on a painting and see if it works. It depends what it is, right? Um, it's not always going to do a very good job if it's if it's like a painting that's very complex, you know, you may notice some weird areas, but it may have a lot of really good usable areas. So you could use that as a base if you want. Um, and then we're going to go over some techniques to actually colorize these. And, um, I wanted to first just touch on these things that are kind of like a good way to get a base started. So you could totally use colorize. It does. It's actually, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed that it was able to color my, my troll monster here. Um, cause this is a pretty weird picture and Photoshop seemed to have some good ideas for it. So that's pretty cool. But what I wanted to talk about is another base layer is if you go to adjustment layers, layer up at the top, new adjustment layer, and then you go to, um, uh, what, what am I, uh, gradient maps, where is that? I know you're around here somewhere. Gradient map at the bottom, there we go, I can see. So gradient maps are a really great way to kind of get a base tone, because essentially what it does is it maps a gradient to the different values of the image. So you'll see we have this gradient with two light tones and it's faded out all the dark tones because the darkest tones are being mapped to this lighter value. So what I'm going to do is just try to add a dark tone, a very light tone and play with some of the colors in between. <clears throat> so I'm going to do kind of a um, reddish dark tone. I'm going to try to get some hue variation going. So my dark tones are going to be cool. So kind of maybe like this purpley tone. I'm going to click down below the gradient to add another color. We can slide this around, but I'm going to pick a brighter color. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. And we're going to talk about hue shifting in just a minute. So keep keep what I'm doing in mind. Maybe I'll add a fourth. And I'll go quite a bit brighter, some sort of like orangish tone. First off, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to right click this gradient map and clip it to our creature. That's going to be a lot easier to see. And then I'm going to go back into my gradients, click in that bar, and you can actually slide these around. So they're not in a position, uh, they're in a position where dark tones are kind of converging on the higher end of the gradient, which is darkening everything down. So I'm actually just going to slide my dark tones down to the left to condense them more on that side. Maybe I want to take this one, put a little bit more yellow. Let me take that down a bit. You can kind of play with the values here. So the couple things I want to talk about before we get too deep into this. One is hue shifting. Um, I don't want to turn this into a color theory uh, challenge at all, but this is something I keep in mind. This is a really simple principle, a rule of thumb, I guess, um, that I keep in mind for all my painting. So hue shifting. I don't know if you can really see much of a difference here, but this is the difference between um, the left side just taking a flat color layer and putting one tone filling the whole sphere in. The one on the right is an example with some hue shifting. So hue shifting, the way I think of it, the rule of thumb that I go by, and I think about this all the time when I paint, is that if you have a warm light source, the shadows are going to be cooler and the highlights are going to be warmer, which kind of makes sense because if the light source is warm, it's creating a warming effect. So by contrast, the shadows will be cooler. So if you have a, a cool light source like the moon, for example, uh, the shadows are going to be warmer and the light source is going to be cooler. Basically, just the shadows are going to be the opposite of the temperature that the light source is, if that makes sense. So I think this looks pretty good. Um, it, it may be subtle to pick up. I probably could have gotten a little bit more heavy handed, but I'm kind of toggling the color hue shift on and off where this is the 
just flat orange, which doesn't look too bad, but then you put a little warmth, a little bit more yellow into the highlight of this orange ball and a little bit more reds. Just not, not, not straight up yellow and reds, but shifting more towards that. So something I think about a lot, I thought maybe that would be helpful um, to kind of explain what we're about to do next. So subtle hue shifts, they don't need to be dramatic. You don't wanna have like a purple shadow and you know yellow highlight um, if it's supposed to be like an orange ball but you can kind of tweak it as much as you want. So that's a bit of a gradient map, and I wanna jump right into another little trick here. So I think it's important to be able to check your grayscale, and I can do that by toggling this, and now when I toggle the gray gradient map on and off, I can actually see what happened to our values. And if you're wondering how I did that, I can explain it right now. Uh, what you do, for a quick little way to check your values. People do this different ways, there's different valid ways. I think this is supposed to be the most accurate way and it's also the most convenient in my opinion because it's a hotkey. But if you go up to view, proof setup, custom. See that view at the top, proof setup custom, click on custom and it'll bring you to this. The, de de sorry, the device to simulate, you'll check it from this sheet, should be working gray dot gain 20%. So view, proof, setup, custom, device to simulate, working gray, dot gain 20%. You'll click OK, and now it'll be gray. So our gradient map is on, but it's gray. So all you do here is you press Control Y to toggle it on and off. And you can do this at any point. You'll even see at the top on your document name, um, dot gain 20% when it's being toggled on and off. So this is great because you can actually paint in this mode if you're, anyone's a digital painter or does any digital painting. Um, if I select my creature and I color pick, you'll actually see it is picking actual colors here. It's just the view that's grayscale. It's not actually changing this to grayscale. So I could actually paint on top of this in this grayscale mode. It's just a view mode and I'll still be putting down actual colors, not gray. So, and I can pick from here and paint with it and it'll be, you know, those actual colors. Whoops. As you can see, not gray. So very useful. Um, and now we can move on to the, uh, the real lesson here. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of those things to add context to this, to give you some tools to work with. But the next thing we're gonna be doing is actually coloring this up. So you can start with a, um, you can start with a gradient map like this. I think I actually made one too. Yeah, pretty similar, kind of the same thing. But what I'm gonna do is maybe I think this is too much. I just want a base tone, so I might ease off the opacity a little bit of this gradient map until I see something that's pretty good base. I like that. I put it around 73. Just something that's not too heavy. So from here, what I'm going to do, those were our two base layers. You can do colorize, you can do gradient maps. That kind of is, gives you a good base to work with. But here's where we're really going to get into it. I'm going to create a new layer, control shift N, and this is going to be a color layer. I just call it color so I know my mode. I'm going to switch to color. And we're gonna go over a couple layers that you can use for coloring these types of things. So I'm gonna right click this and do create clipping mask. I forgot this was a challenge. Just enjoying the top Sam tips. Yeah, I always like talking about my favorite things in Photoshop. So I'm gonna use a soft round brush. Um, mine is just labeled airbrush. It's gonna be uh, just soft around in the general brushes. You can do this with a hard round. If you, that's all you have, just crank the hardness down to zero. That's all the soft round brush is. And I'm gonna put my flow really low. Currently I have it at 15%. Now if you have a tablet, you don't need to worry about this. You probably have your own method for it. I'm assuming a lot of people doing these challenges do not have tablets, so I'm gonna be doing this with a mouse. Painting with a mouse is very difficult. Coloring with a mouse is a little bit easier. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to add some hue variation to this, this head like we talked about, cooler shadows, uh, warmer highlights, assuming this is a warm light source, which is what I'm going with. But I also want to get some skin variation. Um, I'm just going to click. You can drag and kind of see what color you've picked. Click and drag. And that's pretty good. Now if I just click, just little clicks here. You do click, click and drag too. You kind of be able to easily control. If I click a bunch, builds up that color really quick. Um, I want to kind of make some coloration around the eye. I'm, I'm doing this red tone because we have more capillaries around our cheeks and stuff. Uh, so there's usually more, when someone gets flushed, you'll see it in the nose and the cheeks. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this around the brow. 
And this is on top, you know, this is on a separate layer, on a color layer above our gradient map. So the gradient map's a nice base tone. I gotta put red in the ears. Every single time I do ears, I have to. It's just a, it's just a rule. Um, I may do some like orangish, yellowish eyes. Maybe we'll try that. Feel free to make whatever color eyes you want. And you can see how I'm already getting some nice tones here. Um, that on top of the gradient map already, you know, we already got something going on. Daryl, welcome on in, good to see you. Um, if you, you can actually color pick from your creature here. So I like those pink tones that I got. So I'm just gonna grab that. You can color pick it or you can choose it up here manually. And um, I'm gonna add like a little bit of desaturation. I'm gonna desaturate the color I have here. You can see I selected the chin and I just desaturated that tone and I'm gonna make it cooler. So I'm gonna bring it down here more towards purple. And I'll try it. See, that's kind of a purple tone. What I'm gonna do here is get a little bit of this five o'clock shadow type of thing near his um, lower jaw. A lot of times you'll see kind of more bluish tones when you get in that sort of five o'clock shadow. Uh, his lip, maybe I want it to be a little bit more blue, purple, something like that. Let's see what color. Like that looks kind of cool. Get rid of some of these warm tones. I'm thinking he maybe has kind of a dark, purplish lip. Maybe I want might want to mirror some of those dark, purpley tones around the head, but we'll we'll do that a little bit later. I'll show you another layer we can use. Homer Simpson colored chin, exactly. Um, on that topic, I did want to share something with you. I got I got a lot of stuff to share today. Um, topic that I really enjoy is there's this um, blog post by James Gurney. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with James Gurney. Awesome painter, he's got a great book, uh, Color and Light, and then also Imagine of Realism. I have both of them. If you're into painting, I recommend it. Um, painting color. But he has this little thing on color zones of the face and kind of shows some painting examples. But essentially what it is, is the brow is sometimes a little bit more yellow. The center of the face, cheeks and nose are a little bit more red. And then the, um, the chin area is a little bit more blue green. Now this is very subtle. You don't need to put this, but he's showing very, you know, subtle examples of this in various paintings. If anyone's interested, I thought this would be a fun little resource to share with you guys because it's something like the um the little color theory rule of if it's a warm light source, it's a cool shadow or it's um it's a yeah, cooler color shadow in terms of hue and a warmer hue for the the highlight and vice versa if it's a cool sh uh, cool light. It's something I think about all the time. So, I mean, I paint a lot of faces. Now, you don't have to do this. This is not a rule. This is not every situation is going to have that. And it can be as subtle or as overt as you like. But um, I keep that in mind. You know, maybe we can do a little bit more yellow in the head. Let's, let's put that into action here. So, I'm going to just kind of click around on the head, get a little bit more yellow in that forehead. And... Um, I think I went a little too hard, so I'm just color picking from the cheek, clicking on that a few times. And that looks pretty good. I've just kind of added a little bit more bluish tones to the bottom, a little bit more red around the eyes and the nose. And already I'm clicking the color layer on and off here. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong window, that's why I can't see the result. There we go. I'm toggling it on and off, and you can see that adds a lot more life, in my opinion, and a lot more realism. Now I'm just gonna go a little bit more heavy handed and add a little bit more red to that top eyelid. And I'm doing this all with the mouse, a uh, soft round brush and the flow is at 15% like I said. And um, get some pretty nice results in my opinion. So this is a color layer. We did all that with a color layer. Currently we have the gradient map, which was the base tone. You don't need this at all. You can to totally do that all with a color layer, but it it's nice to get a little like kind of underpainting base tone. And then uh, we have a color layer and now we're gonna do an overlay layer. So this is another color layer, sorry, another blending mode that I like to use for coloring grayscale. Now the thing about the overlay layer is it allows you to adjust values a bit I'm toggling my grayscale on just to see. You know, we can kind of see how this matches up to the original. It's a little darker, which I like. I think it was a little blown out. But the cool thing here is we can get darker tones. So I'm gonna clip this to my group here. 
And not just darker tones, but the value of what you're selecting is actually going to affect the image. So if I go really dark, um, this wouldn't make any difference in a color layer, but it does here. And if I go really bright, it make so you can actually tweak the values along with the color. If you don't want to tweak the values at all, you can stick to a color layer. Uh, but this is helpful in a lot of circumstances. So let's try like some some coloration here. I want to give these scaly bits on his head a little bit of like a cool bluish hue. So I'm trying to find one that looks good here. It needs enough saturation that it kind of has the right look I'm going for. I don't like that neon pink. That's that's actually kind of neat. Uh, I'm going to do control A and then delete just to delete everything on that layer. Control D or control or command D, uh, control or command A. Um, those are hotkeys I use a lot, but now I got a color that I think is pretty neat. So I'm just gonna put it on these scaly bits. And the thing is I chose a fairly dark tone. So it is darkening this down slightly. If I go into my grayscale mode, I can see the result of how that is indeed darkening those scales down. And I think I want them to be darker. I want them to look kind of like these hard little shells. I um, think it's a little bit bright as it is. So I'm just kind of clicking on all these darker tones that look like they could be little bits of texture of scales. I think adding that purple in is kind of a fun contrast to the warmish orange tones. Purple, um, you know, and yellow being complementary colors so that warm and cool is always a fun contrast. Hey, what's up, Angela? How you doing? Welcome on in. I see we're talking about Voldemort and Beetlejuice. <laughs> I don't know if this is something I missed, but I was down for some creepy creatures. All right. So one thing, you know, that I, I might want to do is I could even paint on this. I don't recommend painting with a mouse, but you totally could. So I'm going to do Control Shift N and this will be just called paint. So if I want to do any final touches, this is just a quick example because the values on the nose are bothering me. I think the bottom part of the nose shouldn't have as much as that highlight. So honestly, I could just paint over that highlight a bit and soften that high highlight so it's only at the top of the nose and not at the bottom, just creating a little bit more shadow. So I'm technically painting with a mouse here, right? Right there, I just adjusted the actual painting, not just the values of the brush strokes that already exist or the colors of the brush strokes that already exist. You can actually tweak these a little bit with a mouse. Low flow makes this uh, this stuff a lot easier. Now, painting an entire picture with it would be pretty time consuming, but if you wanna make any fine adjustments um, and tweak anything, you have the possibility to do that because we're using, right click that and do clipping mask, we're using clipping masks, and we have a lot of freedom and control over what we've uh, done. So from here, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna go back to my overlay layer and I'm gonna try maybe like a little brightness on this cheek. Oh, I like that, it's kind of like this warm flush look. Uh, a little bit heavy handed, so I'm gonna go with lower flow. I could probably adjust my color, but I do like that color. I just wanna make it much less subtle. So I'm just doing quick little clicks here. Maybe in between on these bright areas, in between the scaly bits, I'll brighten those parts on the head up a little bit. And that's pretty neat. So that's the overlay layer right there. Subtle adjustments, um, but with gradient maps, color layers, overlay layers, and even painting on normal layers, uh, you can get some pretty nice effects. So from start to finish, this was the gradient map as a base tone. Whoops. This was the color layer, which adds a lot of that hue variation. The hue variation within the coloration of the face, um, and then also with kind of cooler tones at the bottom, warmer at the top. Then we got the overlay layer where you can adjust the values a little bit more. And then the paint layer if you wanna make any fine adjustments. Now the last thing I'd like to do maybe is go to the eye and pop that out a little bit more. Let me see if there's anything else um, I've got. Yeah, so from here, we're, we're kind of out of time. But if you recall when we did the uh, lighting a portrait challenge. You can use multiply layers. I'll try to do this quick. You can use color dodge layers. So multiply layers, uh, for example, could be used for shadow. So anything, you know, with these, um, these soft round brushes and low flow, you can add some more shadow in down below. 
you could add some more highlights above with a color dodge layer. Color dodge, you got to be pretty um, subtle with the colors you're picking. I always do a very dark, kind of desaturated yellow. But you can add a little boost of light. Um, you can use adjustment layers. If you go into adjustment layers, there's color balance to fine tune it. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. Hue and saturation, we talked about those layers too. So there's a lot of layers um, and things you can use to adjust, but primarily when coloring, you know, gradient maps, color layers, and overlay layers are a pretty powerful combination. So that is it for me for today, everybody. I look forward to seeing what you do. Again, you don't have to use my image. Feel free to use whatever images you want. Um, but these are open in the starter files if you care to use them. So thanks so much for joining everyone. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys have fun with this one because I sure did. And I'll see you all in the Discord. Bye, everybody.